black shit and queer shit, that's what I'm gonna talk about. And I'm gonna talk about it in the spaces that I'm most involved with. And I'm gonna talk about it in terms of, here's a problem, here's what I'd love to see change. Here are things that are happening, here's what I would love to see change. Here is a persistent issue, and I know people are gonna read this. Here's stuff that I know can be taken back to the correct channels to be like, hey, we need to unpack it. Mm-hmm. But the other thing that's really important about this that I know me and Tanya both, and I'm, I'm picking on both of us because we both struggle with it, is picking when you need to engage. Because damn, there are a lot of fights out there, a whole lot of them, and you've got to pick and choose what's gonna be worth your time and energy. It's the same idea behind why like, if you know somebody is out here and their entire persona is just to dislike you, do you wanna spend energy on that? Because keep in mind that those interactions and engagements also twinkle back into your content. Mm. People know my content as the running thing is that I am Aunt PT. And that doesn't bother me, A, because I don't want no kids, but then B, because it's just kind of what I fell into. I'm the wine drinking aunt. I'm the one that just, I'll keep it 100 with you. And that is consistent across all of my stuff, Mm. point blank end of. I could not imagine what this community would be like if my content was based around who do I want to attack today? Or who do I want to belittle today? Or who do I want to dunk on today? And I just feel like that's also something just exhausting to want to keep up and maintain. But it makes it hard for the people who don't want to feed into that because now we have to be put into a position where we have to pick and choose our fights. Because what Tanya was talking about with dude that she had to unpack earlier, that's one of who knows how many fuck ass tweets she didn't seen about Motherlands. Oh, there's been and a lot. I'm, I'm gonna speak- I was going to say, and I'm going to go out on a limb and speak for Tanya, and she can tell me if I'm wrong, but she's not trying to burn all her bandwidth trying to come after every single person who wants to sit here and rag on Motherland. She'd never get anything done. <laughs> well, 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 too, well, also, and it's not just people that that's their content, that is their brand. They, they've decided mm-hmm. that me being salty, and I'm going to call people out, or, you know, in this and this could get me in trouble, but you know what? I don't even care no more. The the white folks that get deeply invested in showing that they're not a racist, that they're super woke, that they care about black folks, and they they hop in any and every conversation that black folks, people of color, queer folks fill in the marginalization, get into, and they basically regurgitate literally what we said, or they go, well, I'm white and you white, so I'm gonna jump in your mentions and tell you that you were racist and talk over us. And that's their whole brand. And then when you go, hey, I'm still here. I can talk for myself. They go, oh no, that's not what I was doing. I, you know, I'm, I'm trying to lift that emotional labor. And I was like, oh no, this is one I got because some days I make the time. But 99% of the negative comments I've seen, I have just blocked them because, and even the person that I kind of had my moment about, that's why I took a screenshot and didn't tag them because they don't deserve the tweets, mm. relikes, or anything else. Because here's my thing, and I was talking about the systemic issue of go make your own, but no, not like that. They were just the example that showed up in my inbox. That could have been any mm. number of tweets I've seen over the last two weeks. Or the people that are like, because the black and brown folks don't get off scot-free either with the whole, well, I don't like this one person, or I don't like how you do things, or you still play D&D, so I don't like you. You know what? Mm. You can go. I don't need you. Because rarely do I get greasy on the timeline and go, well, here's all the things that I've done. But if that's what it takes some days, like that dude that decided I didn't need help because I have a partner check mark. When you get to go talk at the Smithsonian, when you get to go be in a museum, then you can come and holler at me. Until then, be quiet. Because nobody was bothering but you. But this is something I'm thinking about. Why do we feel the need to have to reprove ourselves for everything that we have achieved or everything that mm. we are doing to people who will otherwise not give us time? They do not follow us. They do not engage with us. There's the, uh, what's the, uh, blanket on the RuPaul quote right now. If they're not paying your bills, don't pay them bitches no mind. It's just Mm. basically that concept for me is what I've had to effectively embrace when it comes to the hate, the naysayers. I remember when I came out 
the very first thing I received on my next broadcast was a hate raid to kick it off. Wow. Tell me that I didn't have a place in this world. It and is experiencing is... that. Oh, why, why am I giving them my time? I remove them. Mm -hmm. And 99% mm -hmm. of the time I do it. But at that point, that dude had annoyed me so much. Because not only did he jump on me out of nowhere, like I'm walking under a tree minding my business on a sunny day and here comes this crabby bastard. But then you show up in a stream that I'm on and you've got your friends coming in. I forgot about that. And then, then I'm done. Because cause the thing is, again, I ignore about 99% of the shit that I see. I block them, I go about my day, except for when people decide that, did you see this? This person's talking shit about you. You need to see it. I'm like, actually, I don't. And that's a reminder for you of if you see someone talking about your friend or someone you know or talking about something they do, don't send them that in their inbox because you're going to just fuck up their whole day. And then mm -hmm. you might get a block because I don't need that. If I've decided not to engage because if it's six hours later, I probably saw it, especially if they tag me. I don't care. Literally. I just wanted, I just wanted to add to that cosign too. Please do not get it twisted. Muting, blocking, and banning is absolutely a form of self-care. It's not just a form of self-care for your mental health, but also it ties back to all of this with working on your content. Because again, if you spend all your time, effort, and energy being focused on every single person who wants to come in and fight you, you're never going to get anything done. And if you want proof of that, go peep their content and how all they do is go out and antagonize people. Right. They're not doing anything but that. And then they're the same ones who are going to come back six months later and wanting to be all Pikachu face. Mm. Well, why can't, how come my numbers won't grow? Well, why can't I get more people? Well, how come my content isn't, do you see what you spend your energy doing? And do you see how the people you antagonize do not spend their energy retaliating? Because it's the same thing with what Cypher just said. Mm. I'm blocking, I'm mute, not just for my own sanity, but also because I literally have better things to do to amplify my content. And I say that because like right now, for example, I'm in this program, I'm a lead artist for Motherlands. I am getting ready to do a podcast with Thousand Dream Funds out in October that blessed them if they didn't put the dates up. I would have forgot because you bitches booked mm -hmm. to shit. I am booked and busy as hell. I'm supposed to be doing a charity stream here in October. I got my stream games plotted out to March. Oh my God. I just don't have time to be out here fighting every single person. Honey, why? No, I'll just mute, block, ban, move it forward. And people sit there and they'll try to bring that back on you too and be like, well, don't you think that's a lost opportunity since you an activist to educate? No, no. no. Not well, like, no. It's not your job to educate somebody <laughs> who's ignorant. You see, listen, you see how quick the both of you was just like, no! <laughs> it's, no! It's, not, it's not our responsibility to educate in that manner. It, it, here's the education that I'll toss out there, and this is for every broadcaster, every creator, and, and God bless uh, Twisted, she's heard me give this speech twice mm -hmm. now. Foundation, additives, and distractions. Mm. Your foundation is your core. Mm -hmm. Why do you create? What drives you? What is the purpose for your show? And guess what? The game is secondary. That is an additive to your show. You need to embrace that. The game is helping amplify the message of which you want to tell the space. Those distractions, those hecklers, the people coming into your broadcast causing you grief, that's a viewer you don't need because they are not a viewer that will ever actually support you. Feel free to remove them from your theater. I was like, swing the hammer. That's it. Exactly. <laughs> Swing the hammer. When I did stand up, when I first got here to LA, I was practicing stand up and there was always one comedian that would go to every open mic and his purpose was to heckle. That was his shtick. And guess who never got a chance to take the actual stage? That heckler. Because he pissed everybody off in the process. Everything about that is just flaccid dick energy and I don't like it. Yeah. <laughs> I don't like that. Mm, no. No. You can stay over there with that shit. <laughs> No, no, I told you, you didn't curse, so you didn't let well, uh, no. that's out the bag now. I'm going to have to make at least oh, no, one no. Vanessa-ism before we're done. <laughs> oh, no, no, that that was me just giggling because it just cracked me up. But, uh, but oh, while my. you were, were talking, it was just also, think about the fact that for a lot of these people, trying to get a rise out of us is their content because the rest of their content ain't shit. Yeah. This is why they don't have numbers. Right. And if they're not basically going out antagonizing people on Twitter, on on YouTube... 
that's why like with YouTube, I don't even look at my comments. I've got an add in that, mm -hmm. that blocks them. And th but they'll be the main ones talking about, well, why do you have XYZ? Because I'm not making my brand antagonizing other people. To again, not mm -hmm. to keep talking about that dude, but not for nothing, I know a lot of people in the games industry. Do you do you know how many CMs and other people where Liggins do like, oh, that's your name, we got you on a list now of never work with you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All the while maintaining that he doesn't need this, then why are you out here? If you if you are not concerned and you don't need the quote unquote clout chasing that the rest of us are doing, why'd you even open your mouth? So that begs the question of what is what are you lacking? Because are you not? Do you have no other talent except being an asshole? And that can't be. That brand is going to burn out. And kind. Oh, go ahead. Just, no, you just hit it. It's they have a void of self. They have no resemblance of self or purpose, and that is why they deflect onto others. That is how I observe it, at least. When I see somebody who is absorbing themselves constantly with somebody else's issues or their thoughts or their feeling or what have you, just constant absorption is showing a, a void of self. So therefore, if that is their outward and what they're putting out in the space, my constant reminder is, well, that is their reality. That is not my reality. And I don't want any part of their reality. So mm -hmm. I remove it from mine. And um, I was going to co-sign along with that, but that's actually a perfect follow-up too. It kind of comes back to the commentary as well of, so what is the grand end goal of doing these types of things to people? Because again, I have a brand to worry about and I have content to create. I know what I want people to think of me of. Is this what you want people to think of you of? Just that person that you go out there, you've been streaming the same content for the last two and a half, three years. You ain't changed up nothing. You haven't adjusted nothing. You haven't self-crit nothing. But then your other part of it is you just want to go out and piss on other people's pancakes. Mm. Is that is that really the persona you're going for? Because don't get me wrong, there's a, a small swath of people that I'm very aware of that looks at me and is just like, Twisted's a bitch, but that is followed shortly by an ellipsis that says, but she gets shit done. And it's like, if that's the worst criticism I have out there, I'm okay with it. Anyone who just wants to think that I'm a bitch because they bored, okay, if that's what lets you sleep at night, live your best life. Do what you got to do, but I'm not going to engage you. I'm not going to give you time and energy. I'm not going to sit here and make it my whole persona to go out and combat you to show that no, 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 what they're saying are lies and blah, 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 blah. Most of the time, this stuff that's coming out is just a bunch of salty people. And mm -hmm. I just, I'm not making time for it because again, I'm working on my content and you, I advise should also work on your content. This way you're not crawling up in T-Pain's thread asking the one black femme presenting streamer why she wants stuff, even though there's a bunch of partner streamers posted up in that thread that you ain't harassing. But we don't talk about that part because that goes into a whole different topic, but nonetheless, we see you. Right. I think we that's actually, you. You, I think that's what you just need to hit on right there. We see you. We, we see, see this you. happening. We, we see you. And mm -hmm. these things you think are you being real or you being 100 or you being like some type of sassy or unique and all this other stuff. People see you and people make conscious decisions right then and there that they're not going to fuck with you. Mm -hmm. And especially considering I remember one of the things I heard early on that kind of the person has since gotten in touch with me and been like, wow, you flipped that on its head and you're absolutely correct. And I'm like, of course I am, but I'm, I'm not actually that kind of cocky person. But on occasion, I do hit you with that. I told you so. And mm -hmm. I remember they had pulled me aside and was like, well, you know, all that forward facing political stuff that you talk about and all these things that just feel negative, that keeps people from looking at you. Mm -hmm. And the thing that actually elevated me to where I am on Twitch right now specifically was a wonderful tweet. I'm not gonna say what Twitch staff it was, but if she's around, she'll speak up because I know how she is. Mm. She put out a tweet that was just flat out aggravated of her being like, how do we get more POC in the charity space? And for whatever reason that day, I heeded the call and I was like, I can help with this if you're about that life. And I just went in and I just started typing. And then we went to DMs and I just started typing. And that was literally what set it all off for me. 
And that's not to say that I, again, am not honest with people. I know that I can be mean about people and other stuff too, but I am still at the end of the day constructive. Mm. I am still at the end of the day constructive. And that whole relationship, that one tweet that I sent out is what sent me to front page with the charity chats discussion with a bunch of POC people in the charity space. That was what, what uh, put me on front page for a bunch of other instances. That's what got me my invites to the Black History Month Summit, the Pride Summit, all these things that I'm involved with that are directly correlating to Twitch attempting to bring more diversity to the space. It was that one moment. And that was because I chose to put my energy into talking about the stuff that I care about, which is still the foundation of all of my content, the mm. absolute foundation of it. And y'all get out here, y'all being a collective unit of people who are just salty. Y'all get out here and think you're doing the exact same thing by being like, oh, you just sucking up all the opportunity. Oh, you just, you just wanna make everybody look bad. Like, I love reading uh, Clara's tweets because the stuff that she gets mm. in her inbox for keys oh, for cracks the social me. Oh, my oh, heavens. Oh, my God. The stuff that she gets. And she's just like, y'all realize this just ruins your opportunities, right? When you land in my personal email calling me a bitch for not giving you a key and saying it's my fault you don't have better content. And I think that's – actually, she said that, too. She always amplifies work on your content. Mm -hmm. Work on your own content. It's there's a lack of uh, gratefulness, I think, for opportunity in those regards, or at least to have the connective tissue. But sweet heavens, it's it's a lot of folks just think I exist, therefore I get. I think that was instilled. Mm. I remember it being instilled when I was a full time YouTube creator. I exist, therefore I should get these views. I should be making this money, right? Thank you. I hate it. And it doesn't it doesn't work that way. You have to continue to work. You have to, but you, here's the thing. You can't just work because that's also something that comes up. It's like, well, I put in all the time. I put in all the energy. I'm broadcasting every single day. Well, if you're broadcasting every single day without a purpose or a goal or an audience that you are trying to attract that you know you're trying to attract, you're not going to find success. Well, and kind of on that same tangent of, oh, well, I need to put in the work. This also extends to the people who put in the work for a little bit and then mm. they stop. And then all of a sudden it becomes everyone else's fault when they are no longer on the radar. And it's like, mm -hmm. but the work never stopped. Just because you did doesn't mean the work did. Mm. And you can apply that to any aspect you want. The work never stopped. Mm. Saying you went on indefinite hiatus doesn't mean anything. The work was still going. And if you want to take a breather indefinitely, good for you. That's on you. Take care of yourself. But don't turn around and then say everyone else is making you look bad because they are out here doing other stuff and you just feel like you should have top priority. For what? For what? Why? Why do you think you should have top priority? What makes you the higher echelon person that is now better than or greater than any other person? Why? Mm. I don't... I don't understand where this logic's coming from. Like if I stopped streaming tomorrow and I decided I'm not gonna stream again until my birthday of 2021, I should not be surprised when more black events come up and I don't get invited. I, mm, I'm not streaming. I'm, I'm not streaming. So why would I watch? It doesn't make sense. Make it make sense, Cobb. I don't understand. But that's something I've seen in the circuit too. And it's just, it's Look. really bizarre. It's really, really bizarre. And it, it kind of ties back into all the stuff that we're talking about as well. With the whole thing where it's like, then all of a sudden it's wanna be negativity and entitled and all sorts yeah. of other things. And it's like, but how does this help any causes that you're interested in uplifting? How does this help your content? How does this help you? Does it help in any of these three categories? What were you doing with this? And it's just everyone on my channel has seen me make this face multiple times where I just stop and I'm like, what are you mm -hmm. not seeing the purpose of this, but okie dokie. And that's why you're a gift now of this face. <laughs> mm -hmm. But we, 
but we, oh, but no. we <laughs> Insta retweeted. You're welcome. Right. <laughs> but, no. you know, but you know, that's the other reason of why we always say go work on your content. And there's so many people, or for me, it's all, it's, I get the other people that go, well, I'm going to go out and buy like a $5,000 PC, buy everything all these companies make. And then they still get five viewers and they're confused. And then they look at someone and, you know, I'm going to be the person, I'm going to be the evil one that brings us up. The, the dudes that stay crying on the TL about titty streamers because somebody wore a tank top. Let me tell you. If it's 90 degrees, I'm going to have on a tank top. I'm not going to be hot and uncomfortable for any of y'all. If you can't go about your day without seeing some cleavage, that's a you problem. I can't help you. But trust me, seeing a, a, a not even fully exposed pair of titties is not going to drive a people to come to anyone's channel. Let's be real. The fact is you're boring because sometimes when I see dudes do this, I will go and creep on their videos and go, you are the most boring, unseasoned, uninteresting, lackadaisical motherfucker I have ever seen. You don't talk. You don't interact with your chat. You sit there and you're playing COD or whatever, and you just stare at the screen, and then you're mad that you got five viewers. If I came in a stream and that's all you're doing, I can go watch a YouTube video and not pay attention to that too, and save myself some time. But no, it's... The existence of titties is stealing the views you think you should have, which tangentially ties it back to what John and, and Twisted were saying, because there's this idea of manifest destiny in the gamer space. I'm a white dude who streams, therefore I should get all the views, even if I got a shitty webcam and a mic that sounds like I'm in a tin can, why don't you pay attention to me? But this conventionally attractive woman presenting person is on the internet and it's 95 degrees wherever she is and she's got on a tank top trying to be comfortable so therefore she's stealing my views mm. and i'm the just other those yeah. views weren't stolen they were never yours to begin with i was actually That's just about to unpack that exact <laughs> thing it's like the problem is you think the views are yours a no views belong to anyone point blank end of burn that into your brain that there are 20 million daily active users on twitch and not now one of those viewers belong to you and you gotta get over it you've gotta get the fuck over it but then on top of that consider those people who are going to these so-called titty streamer chats you want to know why they're going there because that's where the fuck they want to go and you gotta deal with it. You're right, mm. some of them are there for titties, but some of them are there for just hanging out because they know the person IRL. Some of them are there for gameplay. I've been sitting on my stream before and this house gets hot as fuck sometimes when I'm streaming. So people have seen me in my Twitch onesie and a whole low cut top. And yeah, I have cleavage cause I'm a big titty bitch. But the thing is people are not here to watch me for my titties. They're here to watch me play Sekiro. They're here to watch me play Dark Souls 3 Souls Level 1 runs. They're here to watch me do a deep and in-depth analysis of Final Fantasy 7 Remake and its comparisons to the original Final Fantasy 7 that was released in 1997. They are not here for all these other things. So this whole thing that you're doing where you're trying to convince yourself that I and other femme presenting folks have stolen your views because we have exquisite breasts, you gotta let go of the shit. I well, try to push been, people oh, back towards the thought. No, no, I'm going to toss it to you and just say just one quick thought about that is the good tell of is this content worthwhile continuing to create for yourself as a creator? Would you watch your own show for those who do four to six hour broadcast, eight hour long broadcast? Would you go and watch your own show? If yes, fantastic. You might be creating something worthwhile and you can keep that in the back of your head to then take towards your audience. When I think of some of the shows I've created, I know I do shows on a regular basis that I will never go back and watch myself because it is me cashing in that show. If I look at my DJ sets, those are shows that I enjoy both creating and re-watching. Same thing with some of the more creative storytelling shows that I'm doing when I'm incorporating other folks and telling a story together. I like going back and re-watching those because I like the story that we created. That is like me reading a book again. And so always reminding yourself, like, would you watch your own show? And keeping that back in your head if you think you're worthy of viewership. Tanya, I'll toss it to you. Well, it just made me think of, like, when, when people make a big deal out of... Well, also thinking about, like, 
chasing trends because we talked about that a little bit pre-show and we haven't really touched on it too much of like everybody's playing among us right now and and the new the mario game you just finished on stream and it's like you know the idea that if i don't play this i can't keep up or if i don't play this i'm not going to get views or fall guys for the 20 minutes everybody's playing it and it feels like everybody's tired of it already because now among us is out so that's the other thing to think about with your content is that am i going to watch someone because they're playing the popular game or am i going to show up at their stream no matter what they're doing and for the people who stream also asking you and, and not letting your community dictate but go okay x is out a lot of people are playing it do you all even want to see this because i have zero less than zero interest in among us and and my feelings about that and how i feel about watching people stream it are not appropriate so ask me on twitter i'll tell you um but this idea that if i don't go jump on the trend that i'm gonna get left behind or like vanessa said earlier the mm. whole like well i'm starting out and everybody's playing fall guys i'm gonna play fallout Gu- fall guys too you are one person in the millions of people in the directory playing this and if you don't know what you're doing if you if you and if you don't like advertise i'm streaming i'm trying this out you're going to have your 0125 viewers and then be real mad of, well, I have this $2,000 computer and everything's super high def and I got 4K, but I got five viewers because someone in the chat asked about that, about having a good machine. I have an excellent machine, but you know what? If I'm boring, if I'm having an off day, I'm playing something my community's not into, I'm not going to have viewers and I don't care if I got a partner check mark. But there's somebody that could be doing amazing content and nobody knows they're streaming because they don't use social media or they try to follow the trends. Mm. So there's a there's a lot of what is good for you because um, I don't know if Brian's in the chat. A friend of mine, I do a panel called Streaming 101. Real talk about this, like kind of what we're doing today where um, we talk about and we have a slide where it's like the, the 101 cost of starting streaming. And even at its cheapest, mm. You still have to put some money into streaming, even if it's to buy a nice headset, if you're streaming direct off console, or it's to get a halfway decent webcam and a good mic, because sound is everything. You could not have a camera on, but if you sound terrible, people will never let you forget it, and that will be your whole stream of fixing audio issues. But what Mm -hmm. is it you want to do, and what do you enjoy doing? Because when people hop on and they're trend chasing, you can tell. And if I jump in a stream or somebody go raids and they're playing Fall Guys because everyone else is playing Fall Guys, that's going to be super boring content because you can tell your heart's not in it. So think about that too. And don't worry about, well, like mm. if, I, if I go check out Vanessa's stream and she's got like 80 people because she's playing Sekiro and she's really good at it and I try and I got 10, it's because my community knows that I hate streaming it. Not that I hate the game, but I hate streaming it because backseaters, etc. So there's a difference. Don't look at the people that got the big numbers and try to copy because people can tell that too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And this leads to further issues. Um, I I coach about this all the time when I'm uh, working with new creators, new partners. The hell, it's it's actually what I extended coming back to like the YouTube scene. As As I said at like the start of this, it all starts with you. You have your purpose, the reason why you got in this space. You're trying to find a them, an audience that aligns with your purpose so that way you can be in a good flow together when it becomes us that if you if you've aligned your audience with your purpose your us is perfect and you can continue to create and that may be a pocket crew it could be a scaled crew depending on what your mission is and how wide in the world that people want to attribute themselves to that mission now here's the issue that occurs and i see this happen time and time again happen in the youtube scene it happens here on twitch where somebody gets in the scene and they're like, you know what, I want to make money. I want to quit my job. I want to do that. I'm like, cool, that's great. Definitely go for it. And you can make this a career. I've successfully made a career for 12 years. It can be done. But when you think about it, if you drive and just say, you know what, I'm going to play the hottest game. I tried playing Fortnite. I sucked at Fortnite. But John, I did it I'm because so there sorry. was there. But that's the thing. It's like you, <laughs> dive, you dive into that. And the them that I attracted were people that only wanted to watch me play that game. So the us that I created was damaging to my psyche, leading me to a point of like, well, why the hell am I doing this? This is the wrong audience. I have to cut them off eventually. And if you get stuck in the cycle of only being known for that one thing and you don't like that thing, 
that's what leads to burnout in the creative sphere because you aren't aligned with yourself and you have an audience that doesn't respect you for you. Mm. And um, I wanted to kind of tie some of this together too because we were talking heavily about like your presence on social media and other stuff. Thinking about all the things that you and Cypher both collectively were talking about in terms of playing what you like, playing what your heart is in and all these other things, that also kind of leads to a conversation about networking. And that's why a lot of this stuff is as important as it is. I wouldn't be where I am today if it wasn't for the connections that I made when I was, in fact, that 4CCB streamer. I started out out the gate playing things like Darkest Dungeon with no cam. I had a shitty Logitech G. Well, it wasn't shitty. It was Logitech. But I had the shitty headset with the mic. And my mic was ghetto. It was held on with some tape because, of course, it was because it's me. And, you know, my sound quality was bad and everything else. But then, like... I actually was in communities and engaging and then people would raid and they would hang out. One of my mods that's in the chat right now is someone who found my channel from a from a conjoining not conjoining from an adjacent friends raid and happened to hop into a game of Monster Hunter World with me. And they've been stuck with my community ever since. You know, and those types of connections and stuff when you decide that your entire persona and platform is going to be, I'm going to shit on everything. Everything is everyone else's fault. Nobody likes my content because of the titty streamers. You shouldn't be out here asking for this content because you have already made it and all this other stuff. Part of that is also destroying your capabilities to do things like network. And I say that as somebody who, if you have to be absolutely honest about it, I hate being on the bird app. I told people when they first encouraged me to get on the bird app that I didn't want to because I was like, I fucking hate Twitter. And they're like, yeah, but but that's how you advertise and everything else. I was like, why can't I just put up the stream in my Discord? No, 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 you should do Twitter. So now I'm on the bird app. And now I was like, well, maybe I won't put politics in it. Yeah, that fucking died immediately. Mm. Literally failure. But like, it helps me to expand my platform and it helps me to expand the people who want to have that same energy. And now I can intertwine all the stuff that I like together. So it's exactly what you're talking about too, with the whole thing of like, including networking, playing the stuff that your heart is actually in. Tanya already done said it. I'm good at Sekiro and I can bring in 80 to 90 people. I'm pretty sure Talbo helps with that too because she's an absolute God tier player in information sync. But nonetheless, what works for me is not gonna work for everybody else. Not everybody wants to have guest streamers. Not everybody wants to sit here and play a game where they're going to be banging their head against the wall for the next 20 minutes. Not everybody is interested in Among Us. Not everybody wants to play Fortnite. Mm. And that's okay. But this idea that in order to get numbers, you have to be part of that, <clears throat> this goes back to what I said earlier about saturation. Of course you only have five viewers and you're playing Overwatch. You're playing in a saturated field that has been out for, I forget how old Overwatch is, but it's irrelevant to the conversation. It's and been we have four years. I hate everything. I hate it. <laughs> I absolutely hate it. But like, <laughs> I hate all of it. But like, you know, there's pro players that are out here on Twitch. That's where all those views are going. So why did you think that you posted up and no tea, no shade, because I was gold platinum myself when I did play. What makes you think that your content where you're posted up in gold just shitting on your teammates constantly is going to be something that attracts people. Whereas, mm. again, I find myself constantly being like, where's the logic? Mm. Where's the logic? Think about this stuff. Consider it. People were asking me before, Vanessa, Final Fantasy VII came out in April. Why are you not playing it? I don't want to. I don't feel like competing against 30,000 other people who are playing it right now and mm. doing all the exact same thing. I want to play it in my birthday month and that's what i did and we had a good time and the likelihood i had backseating assholes was much lower granted we still got some and we were able to just bonk them on the nose and most of them were fine but like that's when i wanted to play it and so that's kind of part of two knowing my content and knowing my community knowing that if i say i want to play this later there's not going to be anyone here who's going to be like well that just seems like a ridiculous idea why the fuck won't you play it now while it's popular do you really think that final fantasy 7 remake isn't going to be popular you got to think about the longevity of these games y'all and also that the game is an additive to what you're bringing to the space 
mm-hmm. what you what you bring to the game and how you play the game should be communicated. If you're going into Overwatch, are you a pro tier player? Are you a grandmaster? Or I'm similar. I was like I was gold plat. I had diamond one season. People ain't gonna tune into me for skills. I'm mediocre at best at the game. I have to bring something else to the table for that. Um, <laughs> and so you gotta you gotta be thinking about when you're programming your content. What are you actually bringing to this game that is different that makes it unique? Because if I just want to watch somebody play through a play uh, like a video game i could find that in a vod form if it's just the game itself if you're not entertaining and it's just watching a game that is ample opportunity to find that uh one thing i do want to pose for everybody in all of our chat rooms right now uh we are going to open up for questions we ask if you'd like to ask us a question regarding content creation the topics we're talking about today uh type in first if you could write the word question a colon and then your question uh we greatly appreciate it and we can get to a, a series of questions here in a second yeah and then we did get a question earlier that i'm going to throw out to us because i think it's a i think it's a pretty easy one but as people are mm-hmm. giving questions um and that way we can just throw them in our backstage chat um that'd be great one of our new viewers over on my stream faraday asked can you talk about what the breakdown between support and negativity is and what is your experience when putting something out there mm. Hmm. Uh, well, since hmm. it was from my chat, I will I will go first. Most hmm. of the time, it's good. It's probably a ninety to ninety five percent positive, five to ten percent negative, and it all depends on the scale of what I'm either announcing or you know. It really depends, and sometimes depending on who amplifies it, that changes the ratio. Like into the Motherland's announcement, you know. I'm very fortunate to have a foothold in a lot of communities, and um, I know a lot of the Critical Role cast, and that's not a brag, that's just a statement of fact, because I do RPGs, and so those of them that I know well boosted it, and that then brought the trolls and the fools and the how dare you, because sometimes all people want, we didn't talk about this, we should do another one, and talk Mm -hmm. about the fact that people look at content creators at a certain level as personas and mills for content instead of human beings. Mm, yep. So we need a part oh, two. We need a part four hours on that concept. It, we, can we just make that the next topic for whenever we schedule this, like in yeah. 2023 when I'm, my schedule's open? <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> you know, because right now I don't know when I can do this again, but I would love to do it again. We'll, we'll make it happen. We'll make it happen. Yeah, we'll, we'll figure it out. <laughs> oh my gosh. Um, but but do, back and, to the question. Yeah, while you yeah. all are answering questions, I'm going to copy one from my chat. Uh, I actually just I just tossed in two from mine. The first one is very very easy, and I am going to just bogart it because it's easy to do. Uh, question: Are two monitors needed? Not at all. It's it's helpful, but it's not mandatory. I started on a single monitor setup, and life was fine. And I decided on my own volition, I wanted three monitors, but this goes again into what do you want from your content? I have three monitors because I am a project manager to the core and I need to have my super station set up everywhere. Like I have a monitor to my left that is vertical. That is all of my Streamlabs chat. My monitor in front of me is my big chunky gigabyte. It's where the games go. It's pretty, it's sexy. John is like on my screen in high def and it's wonderful. And then I have my third, (laughs) and then I have my (laughs) third monitor, which is where I have just like all the side stuff where I have like OBS and I have um, Firefox and everything. But I have that set up because I have 11 billion tabs open at all times. So you don't need two monitors. You just need to figure out what do you want to do if you got more than one monitor. There's plenty of people out here who are streaming from their cell phone. They're streaming from their laptop. So no, you don't need two monitors, but think about what you want to use that for. The second questions, and I'm fine, Tanya, to answer your question. The second question is gonna be open to all of us because it's a little bit more chunky. Mm -hmm. And it says, as someone who's trying a lot of new things, what are your thoughts on doing things that other streamers in your network are also doing? And we never touched on that, uh, John. I believe that was a topic you wanted to bring up about, yeah. quote unquote, copying content. Mm. Yeah, there's a hell of a lot of unoriginality in the space. I mean, we opened it when we were talking, like when I open 
all of my sessions, when I, especially when I'm coaching a group or, or leading a group through one of my sessions, I always open with, what do you do? Because oftentimes it's the same exact response. And it's the same thing that I see happening. We saw it happen with any trending game. You see, okay, there's viewership in there. I hop into that pocket. But in all of those cases, there's going to be a segmentation of viewership, especially if it's in your network. Like I know with my Twitch team, Superjoy, I have a lot of crossover viewers with the other team members. If I am broadcasting at the same time as them, I have to acknowledge that my viewership will have an impact. And that is okay to know, especially when we're doing squad streams like this. Uh, we do a Wednesday show. I do it with uh, Curious Joy who's hanging out in my chat. Uh, Andre Black Nerd joins us for those broadcasts. We've had Strawberry17, I Justine, like all these awesome people as part of a Super Joy show. But I know that I share a lot of my audience with them. And I have to be cool with, I am contributing to this communal experience, and that is okay. But you have to acknowledge that. Uh, but when it comes to playing something just because your network is doing it, don't do that unless you care about the same property. Because otherwise, it makes no sense, and your audience can smell right through it, and it ain't worth it. Yeah. For, um, oh, sorry. Mike's, go ahead, Tanya. No, no, you go ahead, because I'll talk forever. <laughs> oh, no, I'll cut you off. I like you, but I'll, I'll cut you off. It'll be like when I'm moderating a I'm panel aware. at Twitch um, or anywhere else. John has, <laughs> John has seen me moderate panels. Um, She's boss. I'm just saying. <laughs> uh, for me, it's interesting because there's I'm part, like, the group that we now call ourselves Team Cypher, we do Team Cypher Sundays. Our communities are, are like this. We overlap so much, and for a while, we all were getting the same game key opportunities. So it was like, okay, you're streaming this today. Do I then turn around and stream it? Or do we just kind of have this like flowing river of, we're all streaming today, so you start, I'm gonna be in the middle, this person's gonna be in the end, and just realize that we're still supporting each other. Cause there could be a game where it's like, oh cool, Twisted got this game key, so did I. Like, you know, we both got Last of Us keys. And we both had the same time frame stream. I'm not gonna be like, oh, I'm not gonna mention you or support. It's like, oh, cool, you got a key. So when we're done, you can go over here and check out this game too. Because I feel like even if your communities overlap, everyone still brings something different, like John has been saying. Because the way that I play a game and the way that someone else, like uh, our friend Brian, he and I both played Assassin's Creed Odyssey almost in tandem. We made wildly different choices very different and even though our communities basically are you know on track with each other they are getting a different experience so it comes down to what you're playing how you're playing it and if we all play the same game on the same night cool maybe we could squad stream if it's a co-op game if not when i'm done i bring my community over there they bring the community over there it shouldn't be a because i think that that gives way to the competition mindset of well if i'm streaming this mm. i can't I can't go over to John's stream because they're also playing it. It's like, no, if y'all like me playing the game, maybe, and I like this person, I like their stream, here, here's someone else I like. Go enjoy the same game, but in a different community. So that's yeah. it. That's it for me. And, and knowing how to communicate that, I think that ties in with this next question that I see here posed. Uh, we have a little backstage room where we're grabbing <laughs> the questions for the chat. Keep them coming. Um, if there's a game you like, but few ever stream it, and it isn't popular, should you bother streaming it, even if you only have zero viewers usually? So effectively, you're playing games that don't have inherent reach in the space. And I, I don't, I definitely don't relate to that at all. Uh, sarcasm inserted. Um, but for example, random PS1, PS2 games. Once again, it comes down, why, what are you bringing to the table for that title that we obviously already know has existed for many years, many people have played it, but what is the experience you're bringing with this title that makes me want to watch it again? For If there's Earthbound streamers, I have such a large affinity for that game that I will tune into a person because I want to see their interpretation of the game. I want to see what they're approaching with it. If they're just playing it, I'll probably not tune in, but if they're applying their understanding of the comedy in the title and how that maybe they're speed running it or approaching it in a different manner, then I'm going to tune in. And so that is something of which, uh, be thinking through how do you communicate that? How do you communicate that across the board uh, with everything you're creating? But yeah, go ahead. No, I was say, I've been so excited for this question because I love this question, but I also hate it because it comes back to, to what do you want to play? Because mm. before, 
Like right now, okay, I'm playing Sekiro. That's only a year old. And I played Dark Souls 3, and that's still a little bit younger. But before I had, you know, 11 billion and 72 St. Jude Redemption streams to do, because that's my life now, um, I did nothing but retro stuff. And I play games that are retro influenced. John mentioned early on, I hope with Cuphead. One mm. of the biggest draws to me with Cuphead is that 1930s to 40s style artwork. And it's all hand drawn and I'm an artist and I do character art. Literally the day that Ravenous Christie bought me that collector's edition with all the Cuphead stuff and it had an actual sell from the game I cried on stream. So like retro is in my bones. I love the shit. But the thing is, people are not here specifically for those games. They come maybe initially for those games, but they're here for the energy I deliver to it. Mm. Because like every December, I play Chrono Trigger. There's not going to be a single person that comes into this community who's going to be like, uh, you're going to play this old ass game. Oh my gosh, I can't believe you're redeeming that. Thank you so much, Tavo. You're going to play this old ass game. You talk about it all the time. It's not even about the game anymore. It's about how you handle it and i've played plenty of things that are dated on here because i've played what mm -hmm. i've played final fantasy 6 mm -hmm. i've played chrono trigger i've played legend of the dragoon the legend of the dragoon run oh was man absolutely i love that wonderful. one wonderful oh it was a great time it was an absolutely fantastic time so it's not even about the fact that it's a ps1 or ps2 game it's mm -hmm. about are you enjoying it are you going to bring the energy with it and then the people who are watching you are they going to enjoy watching you and then it's the same energy that John was talking about as well. I love going around to these streams that are playing retro stuff because I like seeing those different changes. I love seeing people's different reactions to things in Chrono Trigger. I love watching the Chrono Trigger randomizer. I watch Sonic Mania compulsively. Because even though it's newer, it's based on all the old school Sonic. And you will never, ever find me in a Sonic Mania stream and being like, huh... I guess they're just gonna do the same thing because it's always, it's the same levels and stuff, but there's always different ways to do it. And then it gets into speed running and other things, which I don't advise because it consumes your life. A lot, a lot, a lot. Don't actually, do speed and, running. And, and this is right here. What, actually, Curious Joy, who's an amazing broadcaster, I, I, I will shout her out on the show because uh, she's sort of like, uh, what's, the, what's the good comparison? Basically, when she has ideas, I steal her ideas, she steals my ideas. We basically are an idea exchange group. <laughs> between the two of us and she actually wrote in the chat just now people love watching people's passion you can't fake passion what are you passionate about show that make that the core of your stream if your passion is drawing painting writing celebrate that the glorious thing about twitch twitch isn't just gaming as i said at the start of this it's a black box theater meaning it could be anything that you want to put out into the landscape so celebrate that. Uh, we got a lot more questions. I want to I make sure we hopped uh, through these here. Uh, Ooh, next can question I take in the, the next queue. one? Uh, what do you do? Yeah, Ooh. I'll toss it to you. What do you, what do, you do when you feel unmotivated to stream? Like you would start and then stop after a couple minutes because it didn't feel right. So I'll toss this to Tanya. How, are you, how do you feel when, with this concept? Um, for me, I try to not stream if I'm not feeling it or it's like, I'll have every intention of streaming, but then I've got meetings, I've got to do work, I've got to do whatever. And then I look up, oh, it's 8.30 at night and I'm not a nighttime person, I'm not a late night person. Or I may wake up and go, you know what, today is not the day, even though I'm usually an early morning streamer for my time zone, US Central, mm -hmm. because I, again, it comes back to, people are gonna know if I don't feel like being on right now, whether or not that means literally having a camera on, how I sound, what I'm talking about if I'm not very chatty. Because for me, at least for me, engaging with people watching is super important, which is why another mm -hmm. reason why I don't go through games that, that need all of my attention or that I know I'll get drawn into, like Civ Six. I love Civ Six. Can't stream it very well because I'll be like, oh, there's people watching me? I forgot. Um, mm. But for me, it's just I, I take a break. I Because at the end of the day, I... I'm going to be selfish. I'm more important than the stream. If I, if my mm -hmm. mental health tanks, if my energy tanks, if I just literally don't feel like being in a chair and being entertaining, as entertaining as I could be, if I don't feel like it, I'm not, like, I'm not going to do it because it's not a good experience mm -hmm. for people who come to the stream. It's not a good experience for me because then I'm going to sit there and go, oh, that was a shitty stream. Why did I, why did I go live? I've done it a couple of times 
but it was more because tech issues frustrated me or something mm. happened or oh i'm stupid and didn't look at my calendar and i've got a meeting in a half hour i may as well not bother because it takes a while to warm up and get into your stream you can't just go live and be on in 30 seconds at least i can mm. um yeah no. and, and think and think about the industry as a whole what other creative industry requires this many number of hours in this frequency mm. of being on as a performer i can't think of any like even mm. broadway has off days if you're a performer and you're on for maybe the two to three hour segment and then there's rotational casts this was um this was one of the things that you taught me in february that pushed me away from doing saturday streams for eight hours because yeah. you had bought it up and it was like, think of any other profession where people get on cam, on stage, and they put on the face and they do it for eight and a half hours. And that is a myth that needs to break in the streaming space in general. The reason why I think we say, oh, we see people broadcasting for eight hours is because the theory of the eight hour workday. If you're not doing the full eight hours, then you're not doing enough is this concept. Everything that I have seen, and this actually ties in the next, uh, next question here, um, is after two and a half hours, you have diminishing returns as a broadcaster. Your audience mm -hmm. starts to trickle off or you're banking on that raid coming inbound and maybe it comes in, maybe it doesn't. But the, the one thing I learned in university and my, my directing mentors drilled this into me, John, the moment your audience looks at their watch, you've lost them. So and, think in oh, that term. Yeah, and I was gonna say too, like some people say, oh, so then it should only be two to three hours. Everyone who watches me knows that I go for five, but I go for five because A, again, I can talk forever. Mm. B, I spend a lot of my time on stream actually talking, but then C, it's exactly what John is saying there. It's like, what kind of energy can you keep up with? I used to do eight hour streams and when it hit like hour six or seven, bitch was tired and it showed and it showed every time. But mm. now I'm doing five hours, three times a week. My community gets more time with me. I feel like I can actually stack and schedule my time better. And then on top of that, it hits hour five and I'm not burnt out. I'm not sitting there going, oh my God, I don't know if I can do this much longer and anything like that. That's like my sweet spot. So I don't even think it's about being interesting for a certain time frame. It's about understanding how long can you maintain interest. Mm -hmm. And if that's and if that answer is three hours, OK, stream three hours. I've got plenty of people in the community who stream two hours, three hours. But do not buy into the idea that you can only be successful if you're going to stream for six to 12 hours. That's I'm going to just say it plain. That's a whole load of bullshit. No, it's a whole load at, of bullshit. Look at successful like media properties. If, if I look at, for example, like Game of Thrones was the hottest ticket for HBO and they banked on their SVOD service for that show when that was in its seasons running. That show is an hour approximate that drives that viewership. And uh, Think in that manner. Yeah, and something that somebody just bought up in my channel too. Sometimes I get lost in the stream and I realize I stream for six hours playing a variety of games. But you know what? If you were having a good time and your audience is having a good time with you and everyone's engaging and stuff, live your best life. Mm -hmm. We're not saying, the thing is, we're trying to make it clear that there is not a distinct cut and dry answer. But the only thing that isn't absolute is don't convince yourself you must be on X hours. You must be on for this long. I've seen too many streamers point blank end of. I used to mod for one of them that literally had convinced themselves, well, guys, I'm not going to make it to partner if I'm not streaming 40 hours a week. Sweetheart, I made the partner and I stream 15. Mm. Let's think about this for a second, okay? You don't have to always be on. That's okay. Like Tanya said, it's okay to be selfish. If that means today is a bad mental health day and you need to go ahead and take five, take your five. Do what you got to do. But it's don't feel bad that you had to give yourself a break. It's impossible for us to be always on it all the time. And I know that's what social media has quote taught us over the years, always on, always active, always engaging, always posting, doing these things every day. Mm -hmm. Choose the path that is right for the workflow of what you want to achieve. Know that you don't have to use every platform. You don't have to be broadcasting exactly how somebody else prescribed to you. Think of your show and in the same comparison of the perfect shows that have been in execution, they always have proper bookends. So an opening and a closing with a goal communicated as soon as you get into the show. You communicate your goal. Today, I want to beat this boss. Great. When you beat that boss, shut off your show. Don't continue. 
that is it. That is the end of your show. I'm gonna go ahead and throw some humor in there, but don't but don't be like me where you end right before a boss and then you start your next stream at a boss when you know you're not warmed up. I have yep. done this at least five times in Sekiro and it is the worst shit ever. Tomorrow I'm starting my stream at the Owl Father and I'm like, why the fuck do I hate no, myself? Yeah, no, that's I, that's why? the warm up period. As, as Tommy was saying, why? like we can't just turn it on immediately. You gotta warm up to it. Oh my God. And Tavo just sits there and she's like, Tavo calls me out for it every time. She's like, you do this every time. I'm like, I know. And I don't understand how it keeps happening. Y'all, I'm going to be here for the next three hours. Help me. <laughs> nope. Nope. Oh you signed God. up for that. You signed up for that. <laughs> you did that to yourself. You did that to yourself. I do it uh, every time. Like, fuck. <laughs> yes, John. Oh, okay. Well, let's, let's, let's go to the next question. Um, uh, Tanya, do you want to take this next one here? Uh, sure. So with, Especially uh, since, 2077. since I'm sitting in a 2077 chair. Sure. Uh, the yeah, flip exactly. <laughs> uh, the flip side of that question about uh, games and and when to play them. Uh, on the flip side, of that 2077 is coming, and the market's going to be saturated to all hell. I'm excited, but do I wait? Do I stream it the minute I have it installed? What's the best way to go forward? So that's it's a hard question to answer because without knowing your content, without knowing you, the question is: Are do you want to play this game, and is your community going to come with you? Because like mm -hmm. when. I'm trying to think of something that's coming out that I'm super excited for that's not out yet. Like when Assassin's Creed Valhalla comes out. And yes, I'm entirely aware of the issues with Ubisoft. Today's not the day for that. I'm acknowledging it. But we're not having that argument. I'm just going to kick you out of the chat because that's a whole other conversation. But I'm excited about it. I pre-ordered it before all the fuckery happened. So the minute that's installed or if I get early access to it and they say I can stream it, we're going to Valhalla. If you don't like it and you don't want to go or you're like fuck Ubisoft or whatever, you don't have to be there because I'm streaming at the end of the day the things that I want to stream and y'all can come with me or not. The community gets input and I appreciate what they say, but at the end of the day, you can't let your community pigeonhole you into what you want. Are you excited for this game? Are you hyped? Are you sitting there like checking the UPS of like where's my game or like when can I preload it? And you're super hype about it. Enjoy yourself. Go stream that game, and, and and establish boundaries. So if you got people coming and going, why are you streaming this? And and I don't like City Project Red, and I don't like whatever, or, or this other game is out. Why are you streaming this? Then it's like there's plenty of other people you can go watch. There's plenty of other games you can go watch. Because I had that when um, Witcher Three and Dragon Age Inquisition were kind of run neck and neck. Because I was like, well, you should be playing The Witcher. And I'm like, and you should go find somewhere else to fucking be. Because right now, we're not playing The Witcher. Or, and, and I played The Witcher, like, again, after it was well out, all the DLC was out. It's like, oh, or is this new to you? It's like, no, it's a new game plus. Maybe you can mm. find somewhere to be if, if you're... Because that's the other thing we didn't talk about, and we can add that, too, to the persona instead of a person. People come in mm. and go... Well, why are you playing this? Why aren't you doing this? And it, and if they're mad about you playing a brand new game or going, oh, you've only got X number of viewers, hide your view count. Be like, you know what? I've been waiting for this game since they announced it. I'm hype. Let me go play it in peace. You go find somewhere else to be. Set boundaries. Kick people out your fucking chat. Mm -hmm. But that's subjective. <clears throat> yeah, we can't tell you. We can't tell you yes, no. But have rules. Set boundaries and go. Y'all know I've been waiting on this game. I got it. It's preloaded, or my physical copy showed up at 10 a.m. As soon as it's installed, we're going. We're going to Night City. Let's go. And if you want to come with me, cool. If not, go kick rocks. Mm. Mm. Let's let's go to the next question. That's. I mean, you're nailing it. For each person, it's individual. It's individual, and I, I think this is this feeds well into this next question here. If you develop a viewership. In a really small but committed fandom, um, do you all have any tips for helping those viewers transition to other games when you're ready to move on from that particular franchise? So, I think of, like, my origin story was Earthbound. I started off in MR MIRC chat rooms, I don't, what was that, 1998 or something like that, about Earthbound. My first stream was Earthbound with a webcam pointed at my television, so that way I could capture the game, because this was before capture equipment started working. Now... What I told the story and like why it ended up allowing myself to transition is because when people would tune in, they knew 
from that from that starting period of I want the world to suck less. This story is about a kid who is bullied in a rural town who wants to find friends and finds it by leaving his town. That related to my personal story, and that's what I champion forward. So now I find what is the connective tissue that connects to my personal story. My viewers will now be along for that ride because they understand who I am. It doesn't matter what I'm playing. I'm, I'm reading and listening along. I don't really have a whole lot to contribute, but I just want y'all to know that my chat is still attacking me about my comments about I'll wait <laughs> to beat my ass. <laughs> Literally, I mean, this man been waiting to beat my ass since Saturday, and my, one of my mods just hit me with and said, not this man is sitting in the living room with Kleiner at 2 a.m. after you just came back from the club, like, mm, where have you been? And I'm just like, I mean, you did that to yourself. I'm good. I'm just gonna. I'm gonna cross. I'm gonna learn how to cross stitch, <laughs> <laughs> or find a cross stitch font anyway. and send it to you. Um, for me, though, it was interesting because I started streaming because of Dragon Age Inquisition. If you talk to me for five mm -hmm. minutes, you know that I'm a walking Bioware encyclopedia, and so that's what made me stream. I want to share the third series in a game that I love. And a lot of people came for Dragon Age, and luckily a lot of people stayed. But I also prefer longer narrative games, which means you gonna we're gonna be here for a minute. If I start playing The Witcher or Dragon Age or you know pick your long Western RPG, but people also cannot just watch a game and and enjoy it. I've discovered, especially when you've got something like Mass Effect, Dragon Age, they will start going into theories. And talking about their romance and why you're wrong if you didn't pick the same exact path they did. And finally, I'm like, I don't give a fuck. I'm or having Persona flashbacks right now. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, don't even, don't even get me started on Persona because it's the exact same energy. And I do actually have a contribution to that. Um, oh, is the provided that Tanya, our, provided our, that our Tanya is finished. Um, no, it's just you know the fandom is the fandom, and I just again I set boundaries. And this is for anyone who streams or thinking about streaming of like, we have a no backseating command. We have a, a, a stream that I mod. Um, we just have a, like, I think it's out loud or chat or rhetorical where it's like, streamer often just says things as they're verbally thinking things out loud. That is not an invitation to backseat. It's not an invitation to go into your monologue of the fifth Ming dynasty of whatever it is that they're watching or playing. Because when you come in streams and info dump nine times out of ten no one gives a fuck they didn't ask you they don't care and that is a wall of text that no one is going to read and now you've annoyed the chat because you want to come in and be that dude you want to come in and be the dude who looks like they're smarter than everyone else mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. i long for the day when someone comes in and tries to backseat me playing dragon age i'll be like so this is what we're doing today let me pause the game and elucidate for you not elucidate Ma'am, I have a college degree. You didn't with the words. <laughs> exactly. I would say, not elucidate. <laughs> Madam. Look, Madam. I have, I have oh, a whole... do all that. I have a whole college degree I rarely get to use. Words are... Mm, words are my weapon. Uh, I mean... And I was going to say, too, like, in terms of the small viewership and then tips to transitioning new people... So I'm kind of in that exact same boat where, again, I started at Darkest Dungeon. Like, that is still my most played game on um, Steam, and it is just where I picked up, where I did back-to-back -back days of just Danky Dungeon. And so the way that I got people to transition was, and again, not everything works the same way for everyone, but for me, it was all about communication. And so when I started having people who showed up and was coming in on a regular, and I had like maybe my six or seven consistent viewers, excuse me, I flat out was just like, so I kind of want to play this game. How do y'all feel about this? Now, that's not to be confused with the idea that I let the entire community control everything that's happening on my stream, but I still wanted to gauge what their feedback would have been on doing something drastic because I knew that they were there for Darkest Dungeon. I've worked on the Darkest Dungeon wiki. I've done a lot of work directly with Red Hook. When they were trying to come to Gen Con, I was trying to help them find hotels and shit. So Darkest Dungeon is very near and dear to my heart. I'm still friends with the technically former community manager, um, Claire DeLune, who was like doing a bunch of rock star mods for the game and everything. But I just kind of opened up that floor and was like, I'm thinking that I want to play more than Darkest Dungeon. 
And part of this is me gauging your feelings on it. But the other part is this me is that the other part of this is me kind of very politely pointing to the door if that's not going to be something you're into. Because at the end of the day, it's about what you want to stream. It's absolutely going to be Necro, thank you for the right, boo. It's going to be about what you want to stream. Point mm -hmm. blank, end of. And if you're not having a good time because you've been streaming Darkest Dungeon for the last 13 months, then you don't you don't have to keep streaming that. It's your community and it's your channel. Live your best life. Do what you actually want to do. And like I said, I'm very big on making sure that com that communication and stuff is clear. Because people know, once I get through this whole queue of stuff through October, we're doing November, I'm picking my own game. December is going to be Chrono Trigger. And January, it's going to be fucking lit because there's nothing queued up. And I've got to pick all the games. And I'm just like, oh, y'all ain't ready for the Breath of Fire 3 playthrough. And I'm here for it. I am ready to play Breath of Fire 3, but I'm going to be nice and wait till 2021. And y'all can't stop me when that game starts. There's nothing you can do about it. Literally, nothing you will be able to do about it. <laughs> and we'll see you six months after. <laughs> we'll yeah. like in the depths of it. I will say, because <laughs> I've written guides for that, and I've done all sorts of stuff with it. And it's just... But it's a combination of what I want to stream and what the community wants to watch. Mm. That's yeah. what it comes down to. And also, everyone in my chat is correct. Breath of Fire 3 is your favorite game. You just don't know that yet. Joy okay. knows it. Joy there, gets it. But There you, know. you go. <laughs> <laughs> I have backup. I am not the only person here who likes Breath of Fire 3. But I don't want to track from. We have a couple more questions, I believe. Yeah. The next question is actually very good. And I think this ties in with that concept we were touching at the very start of the broadcast about now that you're a partner, you've made it, and you got all the big bucks and all this type of stuff. The question is actually... What were some of the biggest challenges y'all faced when you decided to go from streaming as a hobby to streaming as a job? How did you know you were ready for it? Um, I mean, we all got opinions on this, so I don't know who would like to do it first. I'm going to go ahead and make mine short, and then I'm going to let people go in and attack yeah. that accordingly. Uh, bold of you to think that I consider streaming a job. <laughs> that's part one of that. And that's why I said I'm going to stop there, and I'm going to let other people talk first. <laughs> I will say... My, my career has been a weird one. I moved out to Los Angeles when the economy had crashed. I had a production job lined up. Three days into driving across country, I found out that production job was done. A few of my friends who were moving out at the same time were just like, well, shit, what are we going to do? Well, we got time to fill. Let's make some YouTube videos. That started paying some of my bills. That was not anticipated. I wanted to be a documentary filmmaker. I wanted to make change through that means. I fell into it initially. What I discovered, though, after two years of living that life, of that paying my bills, the algorithm changed. Now there was an era of vloggers, there was an era of cover musicians, all these different types of content started to come out, which defavored sketch comedy on the YouTube play. And at that point, that's when I, re I realized for myself, I cannot let any platform ever determine my future as a creator. I cannot let the changes that happen on those platforms determine my future as a creator. And that's when I decided, if this is going to be a job and a career, I need to diversify in terms of where I create and how I create. Because if I put all my eggs in one basket, it ain't going to work. And I've had a few points in my career where I have been full-time creative, and I've had other times where I've worked for companies. Currently, I am in that balance where I'm working for a company and I'm still creating. And that is fine. That's good professional development for yourself. Keep yourself open to that. Obviously, we dream of the time where all of our bills are paid by just the creations we put out there. Honestly, it's not a very realistic goal. You got to think about diversification. Um, for me, this is going to sound real bad considering with that partner check mark and we're here talking about this. I don't look, I don't think of it as a hobby or a job for me. Twitch is a tool to deliver the content that I create it is the place yep. that I've built community. But it is, for me, it is still secondary to what I do, which is run a nonprofit organization, to be an RPG creator, to do diversity consulting. Because at the end of the day, Twitch is the first thing that will be like, I've got four meetings today, I don't have the energy to stream. Or while I don't have a bunch of meetings, there's emails I gotta answer, there's writing I gotta do, there's other stuff I gotta do. Twitch will take a back seat unless there's like a sponsored thing, a scheduled thing. And still, for me, as much as I love it, and I, you know, we're we're doing Motherlands and everything else, 
it is a vehicle by which I can deliver things that I like to do, things that I want to do if I feel like talking, because nobody goes on YouTube, for me, for live content. It's either here, maybe Facebook Gaming, Facebook Live. So this is a vehicle that I can, especially with COVID happening, that I can communicate and talk to people because, I mean, we've all talked about this where, weirdly enough, the talk show format is what does the best numbers. And I'm always like, why do you want to sit here and listen to me talk? Because it ties that whole, I'm not special, I'm not a superstar, I'm not famous. But y'all want to sit here and listen to me talk for two hours? Cool, that's what we're going to do. So it's, not, it's a hobby in the sense of it's cool, but it doesn't pay all my bills. Because I've said this before and I've said it multiple times. Doing the math, I would, if I wanted to do Twitch and have it pay my bills... I would need consistently 1,500 to 2,000 subscribers. That means paying my rent, all my bills, having enough to save for taxes, eating, keeping my cat healthy, and then when we can travel again, up that to 3,000 subs, because I gotta be able to pay to travel, because surprise, having a partner check mark doesn't mean people are paying your way. Very few people get that opportunity. I am more likely to make money consulting than I am doing this right now. And the only reason Motherlands is happening is because it is sponsored by Twitch. And that and is... That, oh, go yeah, ahead. Go ahead. Finish your thought. Oh, I was going to say, and that ties to what I said earlier, too. This whole kind of subjective concept of making it. I say it jokingly that I don't consider this a job, but I kind of feel very, very, very hard what Tanya is saying is that this is more or less a vehicle to deliver the stuff that I like doing. This is my way of sharing the stuff that I love with other people. And especially with like me recently, a lot more of my real life friends have started finding my channel and everything, and they vouched for it and everything as well. One person who's joined recently is a friend of mine I've known since we were eight years old. And I'm 34, so this is a long ass friendship. And literally her first day in a stream, she's like, yeah, this is what Vanessa does. She plays video games. She's been like that since day one. And I get in depth with them and I like talking about them. And I like talking strats with them and everything else. But it never dawned on me to be like, ooh, maybe I can make this into something that pays my bills and I don't have to work. A, I'm too much of a workaholic, sadly. I understand capitalism is terrible and all that stuff, but I'm just too much of a busybody, period, to actually convince myself to be posted at my computer or my PS4 or anything for 40 plus hours a week just playing games. I, I need to go outside, I need to run, I need to go down the street and have bougie ass food. I, I'm just too much of a busybody, period. But then on top of all of that, it's much more my interest in sharing things with people that I love. It's kind of why when it comes to my RPGs and stuff, uh, for someone who feels inclined to do so, you can do exclamation point game and look at my RPG list and you'll see that it's nothing but like 360 titles, Genesis titles, PS1 titles, all sorts of stuff. And those are the things that are near and dear to my heart. And I'm just like, I wanna show these to people. It never dawned on me as a case of, ooh, let me go ahead and see if I can crank out these 2,200 subs right quick and make this into a thing for my living. Mm -hmm. And even from a hobby standpoint, I mean, I play games as a hobby. So I'm kind of just extending on that, you know? Mm -hmm. I'm just kind of extending on that. And I love games, uh, but I'm not as far in as John. I'm not going to be caught with a Sonic the Hedgehog tattoo because I don't feel like having to tear down people about Sonic back lore. Like, I will fight people over that. Earthbound, you can get away with because people yeah. are like, fuck yeah, Earthbound is dope. And you've got Zelda and people are like, fuck yeah, that's dope. And if I get a Sonic tattoo, I just will be in fights every single day and I don't have the energy for it. <laughs> I mean, I still get that time to time. People will pop in like, wait a second. Why why not Mother 3 on your arm or something like that? I mean, even within the Earthbound community, I get like little pocket fights here and there. So it's like, we got oh. it. Uh, you got it no matter what. But it's just like, I do it because... These are my hearts on my sleeves. This is the way that I break the ice with you. If you're coming into my shows, this is what I'm about. Mm -hmm. And so I'm not hiding it. But I, 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 for too long in my life, I hid who I was because mm -hmm. I was fearful of that being judged or that affecting my ability to get work or to remove me from conversations. That's why I stayed in the closet for so damn long mm -hmm. because I was worried of what that would do to me in this industry. But I finally reached a point where I'm like, I don't give a fuck what people think of me how I am because I am who I am and I'm going to show you the full self and if you like that and you're on for it great let's do it let's hang out let's have a good time together 
If not, you know what? You're never who I wanted to have around me anyway. Mm -hmm. And so in oh. terms of that secondary part, though, of how did you know you were ready for it? You don't. You, you don't. Just kind of, you kind of roll with it. I, I didn't know I was ready for partner till somebody was like, you you have the numbers to go get a check mark. And I was like, uh, sure? Okay, cool. And I didn't know I was ready for a lot of this stuff. I didn't know I was ready to have a whole podcast with, again, a senior partner and a Twitch staff person. This is all stuff that I just kind of look at it, and I'm still very much in the mind of being like, what? <laughs> I don't Wait, what's happening? Oh, okay, cool. Yeah, you know what? Sure, great, love it. But that's that's that that mentality. I hope breaks. And this is the, this started the conversation. This is why we're having this conversation. There shouldn't be cafeteria tables. We're all in this. Mm -hmm. We're all in this. It's not a competition. We celebrate together. We uplift one another. We work with one another, just as you would in any other entertainment industry. It's not an isolated journey. And if you feel like it's an isolated journey, you're going at this journey the wrong way. You're going at the wrong way. Um, Tanya, I'll let you actually take this next question that came in oh. through your uh, chat, and oh, it's that uh, you actually have a resource that you can share as well. Uh, sure. So the regulars and mods in my chat may see me have a look on my face because I, I cannot play poker like ever. Um, so someone asked, and I did not I didn't copy over who asked it, so I apologize for that. Is there a resource for queer content creators of color to set up their stream to handle hate spam bots and a long list of offensive words? Also, is there a shared list of usernames that walk the thin line of a Twitch ban? I want this, but I, I want this, but I want to stream, but I need to be prepared if I can. So I know I put it in the chat earlier. And um, John, if you need to close your ears and be like, I can't listen to this because Twitch staff, feel free. Um, I could put my creator hat on for a moment. Depends okay. what you're going to say. <laughs> no, it's fine. And Dosbiff beat me to sharing the document, so let me delete my own comment in my chat. Um, there is not one list because one one thing, and I, I know that I've asked about this, I know that I've commented about it, Vanessa has too, is that there is no one resource to share. Here is like Vanessa's ban word list, ban patron list, here's my ban list, and I can click a button and now they are banned in mine as well. You know, it's, there's no blockchain for Twitch. And I'm looking at the wrong camera, I just realized. Um, what I do is, you know, and then, and this is for anybody, but especially other queer content creators of color, is populate your band word list before you go live. Have moderators, at least one human moderator, before you go live. Because mm. AI is great. The, the, the tool that we use, Automod, is great, but it's still mm. AI. It can only pick up so many things, and based on the sensitivity you set, it will pick up perfectly innocent words and say this is sexual this is hatred and it's like no i just have you ramped a little too high today let me turn that down hmm. um network with other queer creators um vanessa and i are both on rainbow arcade there's a lot of us on that team there's a lot of folks um you can find another lgbt tag hmm. but the part about whether to ban or not except in very clear cut you're coming and calling me slurs using racist names what have you Everybody has their own level of where to ban because there's things where I've been in chats and I forget that I don't have a sword and I would never let this fly. But then the, they know the person, maybe they know them in real life and they let them get away with way more than others do. That's a subjective thing. So it's like, what are my rules? I mean, if you're depending on how you're watching us, we all have rules. Mine are somewhere under my face. Um, and make it so people have to click on that. Now, that doesn't mean they're going to actually read them. But have rules so you can go back and say, I know you just joined this chat and you had to click on it to join. Here's a thing that you may want to think about. And there's always going to be people who skirt the line and go, well, it wasn't. You didn't say I couldn't do it. That's like, okay, you can go somewhere else. Goodbye. We're not playing the you didn't say I couldn't do it game here. Have an established list of what we don't do here like if you say we don't allow ableism racism sexism homophobia and people come in and do it and they try to just push the line just ban them and granted mm -hmm. it keeps them from not watching the chat but it's going to send a real clear message i said what i said this is how we act here and if you can't 
get with the program and not in a do exactly as I say, but you're not going to make me and the other people here uncomfortable, especially as you grow a community. And people are going to appreciate that because there's some streams. I love these people. I can't fuck with their chat. I just sit there and I go, I like you. We can have a beer the next time I can see you. I don't ever want to be in your chat or I will never talk. So think about what you're doing with your channel. Are you building community? Are you streaming games? Mm -hmm. Do you just want to go do what you're going to do when you don't interact with chat? And then turn follower only on. Set it for one or two minutes. Mm -hmm. And that way people have to make that decision. Is bothering this person worth clicking, wasting a follow? Because you can only follow 2,000 people on Twitch, I found out. Um, mm. Which I didn't realize until very recently. And also, you know, how do you handle this? Are you the kind of person where someone comes in and harasses you, you're going to get flustered and be like, okay, I'm done streaming, I tried once, goodbye. Or are you going to be like, fuck them haters, I belong here too. And I realize not everybody can do that because Vanessa and I do that, but not everyone mm. can have that attitude. And do what's best for you. If you try and don't like it, there's no shame in saying Twitch ain't for me, streaming ain't for me. But have you been words list, have at least one or two human moderators. And talk to other people who stream, because believe it or not, we talk. I'm like, oh, this person acted an ass in my stream. Here's what they did. You may want to act accordingly. And I'm not saying just go ban them out flat out, but should they show up in your stream? Because I host you a lot, so you know what may come your way. There's definitely a digital neighborhood watch. We all share it with one another. Of like, we saw this person do this. I was actually just about to say, cross bands are a real thing, and they are a mm -hmm. way of life. And mm -hmm. like, I remember, I still have people who join my community and Cypher kind of touched on this a little bit. I have a whole channel dedicated to what I call, we're the wine seller. So anyone who doesn't make the cut goes into my channel called the band patrons. And that bad boy mm -hmm. is public and it has their name and their offense. And that is public so that everyone who is in there, if they want to preemptively protect their communities, go right ahead. That is exactly why I have that there. Because if they're not welcome here, I'm going to go ahead and take a gamble and say that they're probably not going to be welcome in your space too. Mm. And yeah. use cross bands. It's like the fake ID wall at like a bar or something like that, where you're just like, they tried, not going to work, not no. here. And then like I said, and I put the offending thing on there too. This way people don't come back and they're like, well, doesn't it seem like you have a lot of banned people? I mean, you see why they got banned. And it, again, sets that clear-cut tone of what kind of community are you building here? You see this person is banned because they came in on some All Lives Ladder bullshit? Think about that next time you want to type that on your keyboard. Mm. I mean, that's you can a type real it, example. But you know what the consequence is going to be. Mm -hmm. I was like, you can type it, but you know what the consequence is going to be because you've seen banned patrons because that's visible to everybody. Yeah, and that's you don't an have actual... to act like that was a surprise. Right. And it's interesting, though, because I brought that up to my mods. Everybody was like, eh, I don't know how I feel about it. Because we talk about it in our mod channel. But it was like, eh, we don't know if we want that, like, in the overall, like, here it is. Because you also don't know if, if somebody's, and not that I've seen it in your community, but you never know if someone's going to go, oh, this person's an asshole. Let me get on Twitter, too, and talk about how much they're an asshole and brigade them. And granted, some people are assholes. They deserve what they bring to the door, like the dude that was like, I'm going to give the energy you bring to me, but I don't want to open the door to, if I do a thing you don't like, am I going to be on this list? Because I'm, I'm proud to say we've had to only show about maybe eight people the door overall, and that's with a big growth in the community during June and oh my god, black people exist, and getting a lot of people from various communities come in. So it, it's up to you and your mod team of how the community goes. And for Vanessa's community, that is perfect. My mods are like, eh, not sure how I feel about it. So it all depends. Again, it's all subjective. So some things y'all are asking, it's like, what works for us may not work for you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm. Yeah. But that's pretty much what you got to do if you're a marginalized person looking into streaming. When I first started... I didn't plan on having a camera because my immediate response was, nah, I don't have the spoons, the fortitude, the bandwidth to deal with racists. And then I remembered that I can use my words and curse people out. And so then I got on camera and people were like, oh, she seems cool. And then every now and again, maybe once every blue moon, I'll get the person who's just like, oh, look at this N word. And I'm like, well, mm. here's those clown shoes you ordered and the circus is down the street. 
Yeah. <laughs> and and one other thing before we jump to another question, because I know that uh, Vanessa has a hard out. Um, if mm -hmm. your if your thing is chewing on your food, as, as someone likes to say, that do your thing, because I firmly believe in making example out of people when it's warranted. Not just every random person, but when the person is persistent and they come in or they think they're being funny or they just ignore the rules up up until that line where literally a strong breeze could knock them over the line and they earn that ban, I will make an example out of you. Because you're not going to come in the stream and mess with the community and do what you're going to do and think that you're going to get the five minutes of attention you clearly needed in that stream that day. Mm. There's a few extra things that I do on my side because I give you both credit. You 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 take the, a lot of stuff head on. You confront it and you shout it out. I get flustered. I always got flustered when I was on stage and people would heckle me or do things, and I still get that way because I I'm very much an empath. I absorb it, I internalize it, and it's very hard for me to get rid of it half the time. So a few things that I've also done, and I highly recommend this for anybody who it's hard to see these things come in the chat and they do arise because as you're saying clowns arrive uh what i do is i turn off the visibility on mod actions on my side if something's getting caught by auto mod or filtered or banned i don't see that anymore that helps me with the processing of it are you okay and so i highly some... recommend that She's i just over. read a lot chat that just took me out wait what is it because i told somebody they were just like wow this happened i was like yeah that's that dry coochie energy and someone just said that they had another person hit them with stinky dick energy and i oh, am Jesus. weak <laughs> I, I was like are you all right i'm like are and you this, this is what i'm saying like that though and that's i don't want that in my chat i don't want all. that i'm just that, like i need I'm you to go high school sir can you please go wash your ass? Please and thank you. Oh my <laughs> I need god. You. Here's your clown shoes. Here's everything else. I can smell you. You need... Please. Stop. I'm sorry. Oh, I'm Lord. a terrible... No, my my chat's getting a riot out of this. Oh so my it's all god. Good. It's good. They I... said stinky... Oh. I mean, there's <laughs> Oh my god. Oh, have... I think it's time for another question. <laughs> I think so. And you know what? We're... <laughs> We're gonna. I think this is one for Vanessa because I my answer is I just fucking oh, quit. Yeah. Um, what do you yeah, do I did the same. when you can't beat a boss or it's not possible to win? Do you look up the answer or play anything else? And Vanessa, that is all you. Not a problem. So when it <laughs> don't give me that emote right now. When it comes <laughs> to stuff like that, um, first and foremost, I'm a very big advocate of guides and people who tell you, oh, if you use a guide, you're a cheater. Point them back to that tweet from they who will remain unnamed and how that did not work out the way they thought it would. And then remind them that the guides exist explicitly to help you out. Like that's what they're there for. And there's no tea, no shade, no shame in using a guide. That, that's what they're there for. Saying that it doesn't count because you had to look up how to do a fight is some of the biggest bullshit under the sun and mm -hmm. I can't stand it. I mm -hmm. literally cannot stand it. Like, good for you that you figured it out, but everyone doesn't operate on the same level. Mm -hmm. Chill out for a second. The second thing being when you can't beat a boss specifically or it's not possible to win, I'm a very big advocate of taking five, stepping back. People have seen me do this on my stream when I'm playing the FromSoft games. If I'm having a moment on a boss and it's just kind of like not going the way I want it to, but I know that there's other things to do, I literally will just break off and I'm like, you know what? We got other stuff we could take care of. That's not no problem. Like, I was joking earlier. Um, oh, God, we don't talk about that. We're, we're going to get to that, like, on a late... You know what? Just join the Discord, and I can bitch about that all day. But um, <laughs> they're talking about bad guides, which do exist. Um, oh, yeah, there's a, there's a fair amount of that. Oh, God, there's mountains of them. But, like, for example, I was joking earlier about how I stopped my stream right at the owl fight. But the thing is, that fight, I don't have to do it right now. I can literally leave him sitting where he is, and I have all types of additional stuff that I can do before I have to jump into that. So even though I've stopped right there at him, I know I don't want to start my stream with that because it's just going to be me being angry and frustrated. So I'm just going to go do other stuff 
mm. that I can in the game. There's plenty of things to explore. There's plenty of content to go into. I did the exact same thing when I was streaming Cuphead because in the second world, there's one, oh God, there's one boss in particular that I mean, he rocked me and he rocked me hard. I just struggled and struggled and struggled on him. And it was like, you know what? I have other bosses I can go do. I have a running gun I can go do. Let's knock those out. Let's get some of these shakes out, kind of get the bad energy out of here and go do that other stuff. And then we can come back and visit this. Mm. And that's what I did. And I went and go did the running gun and I died a couple of times doing that. And then I did a couple of the other bosses and everything was fine. I got those taken care of. And then I went to that boss and was like, okay, we got some stuff done. It was a productive day. Let's go ahead and see if we can take care of this. And that small window of cool down is usually what I need, generally speaking, to kind of get my head back in the game. And I had the same thing happen with Dark Souls because I had to go fight Pontiff Sullivan. I still hate that man. I can't stand him. And when I paired him, my soul of one one, it was like the best day ever. But, you know, when he was the first big boss I ran into that, like, I just... I just froze. I was like, I don't know what to do here. And so I kind of ran around. I went ahead and cleaned up other things. I took my L and said, you know what? I want to do this with an ember so that I can get someone to help. And that's okay. And people tried to come in and be like, oh, well, you didn't beat him without help. I didn't. What's your point? Well, you're not a real gamer. Oh, I have a response for that. Fuck you. Yeah. You that's like when it comes to that the, the real gamer argument is not an argument period so like we just need no. to dispel that shit uh no. period there's there's all types of gaming and gamers and types of gamers and approaches to games i will say it too if like that's the thought when it comes to like you're not a real gamer for using a guide i program every single one of my show with two things how long to beat.com telling me how long is this game going to take me on my series of shows and i break up my shows accordingly and I structure my show around a walkthrough, knowing that, okay, I got X number of chapters or X number of bosses I can finish tonight. That way mm -hmm. I keep it to my two to three hour show and I can maintain something of which is capable for me in a performance cycle. But to say like, oh, you're not a gamer because you approach it that way, nah, piss off with that energy, I can't take it. Yeah, and so when it comes to like the whole concept of, I'm really struggling on this, what should I do so I don't kill my content? I would advise break off and do something else in mm -hmm. the game that's completely 100% legit, especially in some of these games, like people are mentioning in my chat, like RPGs and how they can't do RPGs without guides. Go level, go find other things to explore, go find other things that you can actually do. And then also, especially with RPGs, there's like 800 things to do mm. every time, all the time. There's a plethora of content within RPGs, especially. So you should never have to feel pigeonholed into the idea that if I don't do this right now, then I'm going to be a failure streamer. I'm going to be a bad gamer. I'm going to... No, you're not. It's just you're not going to beat it right now. That's okay. That's okay. And um, they're always possible to win. And if it's not possible to win and it doesn't have a scripted event, you write them a strongly worded letter and say, this boss is bullshit. <laughs> Which this is valid. Is that's yeah. why I have a games graveyard in my Discord at this point. Like, here's all the games that I quit because I didn't enjoy, and then here's the games that beat me because I can't do it. Mm hmm Yep. And it's okay, too, to go ahead and walk away from games entirely. Um, Talvo and I have actually talked about this extensively with people who go into channels and set streamers up for failure in a game, and then the streamer reserves the right and absolutely should say, well, then I'm just not going to play that. And then people get all mad and they're just like, wait, we want to see you. But if they're not having a good time, it's their channel and it's their choice. Mm. And that's all it comes down to. Like when it came to me doing Nameless King on um, Dark Souls 3 for the first time, I knew that I had a whole streaming schedule that I wanted to stick to and everything. Nameless King fell outside of that scheduled time frame. So what I did was I beat him off stream elsewhere. And I recorded it for everyone and I went ahead and uploaded it so that they could see like my reaction and everything. But I didn't force it into my stream just because people felt like my run was gonna be invalid if I didn't do it right then and there. Mm. Mm. So yeah, don't, basically my answer to that is have fun, use guides if you need to, 
and do not let people bully you into extending your content longer than you need to. Exactly, exactly. And this next question here uh, around content, we've been talking a lot about gaming, uh, obviously during this, because we dabble, I would say, in some games <laughs> uh, as broadcasters. Um, but do you have advice for non-gaming streamers in terms of building up their viewers, their fandom? Uh, as, as they highlighted, non-gaming streamers are less common on here. Do you have tips to help boost that? I, I have my theories. I'd love to hear yours first. Um, but I'm happy to answer this. Um, I, can I don't go. know who that's directed towards because I, I was going to say because I play games. I don't know. Uh, you okay. cook. Excuse you. You bake. I do bake. I enjoy don't, baking a lot. Don't, don't hide. I can see your camera. And you're small. I like baking. You're small. Huh? I don't... Trying to like crawl under your desk. I can see you. What you uh, mean? Yeah, yeah, I see you sliding out of the camera frame. What are you doing over there? <laughs> I, wow. Baking though, it's so good. Baking uh, is great. <laughs> but for non-gaming content, since I do, the joy of being a variety streamer is I don't do all just video games all the time. Um, it's the same thing, you know. The same things that apply to being a gaming streamer apply to non-gaming content. And there is plenty of non-gaming content. The hard part is finding it because when you go to the front page, it's almost always gaming content. Go look for people that are doing like arts, creative arts and crafts, which I have a whole feel about the arts and crafts, but that's not the place for it. But like when I do miniature painting, I do it under arts and crafts or crafting or whatever the category is, or just art. And it's the same thing. Be consistent. You know, if you decide my thing is I'm painting minis or I'm teaching myself the guitar and that's what I'm going to do, get in the music category. And one thing we haven't talked about is branding and social media. And that can be another, that can be a whole other session. Mm. Have the same name across everything and use social media. Even if your Twitter is just, and it goes against my own personal advice, but if your Twitter is just, I'm going to be live today. We're learning how to play Ring of Fire. And that's the stream. Um, join me at 6 p.m., whatever your time zone is. It, the key to building any audience, no matter your content, is consistency. Telling people that you're live and when possible going, that was awesome. You know, thanks for coming through. Thanks for the raids. We'll be back on next planned day to stream and building up that expectation that you'll be on on this time, this, this day of the week. Because if you're not consistent, I don't care what you're doing on here. If it's ad hoc, nobody knows when you're on, you decide 2 in the morning, I can't sleep, I'm going to stream, but then you go, well, nobody's watching. A, it's 2 in the morning, and if all your viewers are Americans with a day job, ain't nobody up at 2 in the morning to watch you, except for the night owls, the Europeans, the Australians, and the folks in Japan. But if you are a night owl and you want to build that audience, it doesn't matter what you're doing. You have to say two times a week, one time a week, even when you're starting, to make sure you're like it, hide your views, and go, mm. this is what I like to do. I like restringing guitars. I like building models. A friend of mine, his stream is literally building Gunpla, but he's consistent. Every day, there's a tweet at the start of the day, middle of the day, when he's live, and a thanks for coming to my stream tweet. And that's how he gets people to know he's live. So... It's consistency no matter your content and also doing what you enjoy. If you bake, if you cook, a friend of ours that I'm going to name drop, Drunken Buddha, he is a chef and his content is 90% cooking and baking and he's got a schedule. So you know, oh, I know at 6 p.m. his time zone, he's going to be making whatever and I will learn to make it or... I would just want to see what Buddha's cooking today. Let me make sure I'm in his channel. People will show up if you are consistent and build a community. Not just show up. You can't just make a Discord and make a Twitch channel and be like, I got a community. That is not how that works. But you have to be welcoming, be inclusive, be consistent, and also know your boundaries, know your limits. If you know... I want to learn to play guitar, but I can only do maybe an hour because I've got carpal tunnel and I can only do it twice a week, then that's your limit. But whatever you want to do, I don't care. Like, if I want to take apart a microphone and rebuild it on stream, that's not my usual content. 
but if I know that for a whole week that's all we're doing and I tell people that, then they'll show up. Mm -hmm. And know that a community always has a purpose in the same way that you do. This is why when I say you finding them becoming us is so important if it aligns with you. So that way your community has your purpose and an attachment to anything that you want to dive into and create. Uh, Joy actually highlighted when we were talking about views, hide the views from any system you're broadcasting through. I think of it in the same way when I would take the stage when I was doing a musical, I was blinded by the front facing lights. I could not tell if the audience was filled or not as an actor on that stage. Treat your broadcast the same way. Reduce the reliance on the audience interaction. Appreciate that they're there. Give them the best damn show possible. But don't play into the expectation that they have to be there for what you're doing. Yep. I love that my chat immediately started to quote a variety of 80s tracks. Blind, we, well, <laughs> blinded by the light, blind me with science. How many more blinded buys am I going to get in the chat here in a second? I mean... <laughs> there we go. <laughs> okay. Yeah, but I mean... Sorry, I'm like sitting what? here cleaning up stuff too. Okay, stop multitasking. Stop it. N that will never happen. It is you five minutes. Let that go. <laughs> wow. See, I should As we're talking me. about focusing on content. <laughs> hey, Alex. But no, like. Oh, thank you, June. But yeah, I was going to say, I didn't really have a whole lot to contribute to that because I think probably about 95% of my content is gaming. But when it comes to things like the baking streams and stuff too, I think Cypher, you really nailed it home with the whole, make sure you're consistent across everything. Mm -hmm. Because it's gonna be all about how you advertise yourself. It's gonna be about how you carry yourself. It's gonna be about how you want people to find you and everything. Also, there needs to be a small like segue about hashtag culture. Mm. We already said kick out Kick out things like small streamer, it's useless, don't do it. But also think about how you're doing hashtags because you don't need 50 of those bad boys. Mm -hmm. As a matter of fact, it will just kill your tweet. It will kill your Instagram posts. Don't do it. Keep it to relevant things. Hey y'all, going live. And if you're doing arts and crafts and knit uh, knitting, congratulations, them's your two hashtags. That's that's all you need. You don't, you don't need to do arts and crafts, then arts, then crafts, then knitting, then yarn, then name your needles, then the ad. That's too much. It's too much. Learn about those things. Learn about how you can actually push your content out there so that people can find it, especially considering Twitch itself, even though it is heavily gaming oriented, mm. we do showcase other things. Like on the front page carousel right now, we've been having a lot of music. I know that they've been trying to focus down things like when it's a fitness month, getting fitness streamers up there you know they're trying to focus on getting more charity stuff up there so don't feel dissuaded because you're like oh i'm not gonna get a following because mm -hmm. i don't game tanya and i both have a friend uh it's imperial mm -hmm. her best streams every time is when she's doing sewing and knitting every single time yep she plays games she plays games with viewers but the people come out the hardest and heaviest for her when she's like, okay, you know what? Today we're gonna make an Animal Crossing tote bag. And people mm -hmm. are just like, let's do it. I'm here for it. And she sits there and she's great at her craft and she talks to her chat and just stitches and knits and does all <laughs> that stuff. Yeah, and, so, yeah and definitely don't get dissuaded. Yeah, and you know, and again, the, the power of networking and, and a small segue into what networking is not, it is not DMing another streamer and going, I'm live, can you share my tweet? Or tagging 80 mm -hmm. people that you're live and going support small streamers. The minute I see that, that is a block, that is a mute, that has guaranteed I ain't never looking at your content. Mm -hmm. Or or the whole, and, and I haven't, can someone in my chat do exclamation etiquette? Um, I actually wrote a thing about Twitch etiquette because I keep I kept seeing the same things over and over, and uh, saw this in in Vanessa's chat of I'm leaving to go watch somebody else. I'm leaving to go stream, oh, God, or I, I just it. I just finished <laughs> streaming, or or I'm gonna stream later. And there's a difference between like 
the three of us talking about streaming because we know each other, our communities overlap, or there's a business reason, like in, in John's mm -hmm. case, where we're talking about a stream or whatever, versus you're brand new and you come in and go, I just finished streaming. And we actually, uh, an example is we had someone who would actually come in while I was live and go, well, how long are you going to be on? Everybody can come to my stream when you're done, right? And I was like, no. No. Oh, they, they did not last long. Because eventually we had to do the, let's have the etiquette conversation. And like, I had maybe been on like a half hour, an hour, and it's like, I just started my stream. And if, you, and if you're going to go stream, go forth, good luck, have a nice stream. But don't be in someone's chat to literally poach. Because I can guarantee you the minute you said that, nobody in here is going to come watch you. Because that means you say the uh, mm. Yeah, go... The, the one that I had was similar to that, but the one that got me is that this person, they're not with us anymore. They came in to advocate themselves, and I kind of just hit them with the casual side eye, where it was like, okay. And then the thing that actually blew it out the water for me was that 45 minutes later, they came back to my stream to announce how they had no viewers. And I was just like, okay, listen, mm. this isn't what we're going to do. Like, it was bad enough that you tried to poach, but then for you to turn around and try to guilt everyone in my community to come and make you feel better because I, I think at the time I was running like a solid 40 or 50 and they were like, well, I only have like two viewers. And I just looked and was like, you did not just walk your ass back into my channel to tell me how many viewers you had in the hopes that A, people would leave to go see you or that B, I would tell people to leave to go see you. Mm. You ain't do that. Not in front of God and everybody. You didn't. Mm. <laughs> Somebody pulled some shit on my wife's stream, and, and, and frankly, I've been really disappointed in the fact that, like, she's just coming on to tell her stories and tell experience as a designer, as a host in the scene and all that, and she often gets these just, like, shit humans, honestly, coming through, just saying the worst things to her. Completely unrelated stuff. But the one thing that really set me off that I saw was somebody came in the chat, tossed a 50-bit cheer, and then <gasps> self-promoted themselves. With I cheer. remember what? you talking about this. And when she didn't shout them out for that cheer, because she saw what they were doing. They were basically coming in, tossing the tip in order to get the promo. And she eventually called out. And she's like, no, I'm not going to shout it because he started sending over his people. And they were just like, wait, you're not going to thank for you know us cheering you? This is a gift for you. What gives? And then they decided to broadcast their reactions live of her capturing her broadcast and saying how she was a cockroach for that. <gasps> it, wait, isn't that a TOS no! violation? It is, is, is. <laughs> at least okay. in my interpretation, because ultimately it's it's reacting uh, negatively, putting a person on that stage. I mean, uh, granted, I'd have to defer to TOS and that, but that is gross. That is that is bad behavior. That is not warranted and it's not welcome. So and it's the, the same thing that I think of somebody like coming in and self-promoting if that is against the terms of which you set for your channel. Wow. It's, and and just for 50 that, bits, that is not welcome behavior. I mean, <laughs> Sorry for 50 bits. I mean, yeah, you could have dropped off a smooth 50k, but even then I would have banned you. I mean, I would still ban you and <laughs> I'd probably refund your money at that point. But you're gonna mm, mm. I wish we'd I I mean John, I can stay up for a while. I don't know about Vanessa, but No, I gotta get out of here because I'm pretty sure Paul <laughs> well, was like no, in the I... other room, like, I will curse you out. And it's like, oh shit, when he curses me out, it's bad. Oh no. No, <laughs> what, what we can do is we, we can we can wrap this all because I think there's a lot of topics that we do want to pick up in another conversation that yeah. we didn't even get a chance to. I mm -hmm. think to, to, to close the thought that I had in that, um, you wouldn't go to let's say your favorite concert let's say you got to duck out early you're not going to shout at the band on stage sorry i gotta go great show i actually got to go down to the bar down the street but thanks so much you ain't gonna do that who the hell does that when you go to a party like if i'm leaving a party i'm not going to shout to the entire crew oh i gotta get going i gotta do my stuff no you say to the host hey i gotta go or you just ghost you leave because that's proper etiquette same I deal in your space I literally just got this visual of somebody standing next to me in like a Minus the Bear concert and being like, hey, Jake, everyone, you're great, but like Starfucker's playing down the road. I got to go see them. And I could just feel myself quietly turning to them and just being like, you ashy son of a bitch. <laughs> just, <laughs> you, just go. 
Just leave. Finish your fucking beer and just go. Oh my god. I I'm not even the person impacted and I'm mad for you. Oh, oh. wow. Nah. But I mean, he, I, I guess to encapsulate a lot of what we talked about today, uh, and we'll do and we'll do some closing thoughts here as we close this out, but once again, this platform all platforms this digital sphere the entertainment sphere it's not competition if you're focused on your craft if you're focused on every piece that you put out in the space trying to better yourself better your journey tell another story expand on a story that you've already started that's where the reward comes in the end there was a great experience i did I, i documented all the work i've done for the past 20 years on my website and that was the most rewarding experience to reflect on all the works i've done and just say, I did that, that was a fail, but I learned from it, and just capture all of it and celebrate that. That's what I encourage you to do as a creator in the space and to encourage creators that you watch to enjoy their journey that they are on, not to compare their journey. And if you see them comparing their journey, try to pull them out of that because that is dangerous behavior. It's dangerous for the space. Mm -hmm. And again, the whole reason that this kind of gathering came up is because when it's all done and said all that stuff that you're thinking about doing going in and shouting out your friends demanding that people give you viewers going around and shitting on people's successes and pride on public social media because you feel you deserve and so on and so forth hey take all that throw it in the garbage go work on your content trust me it'll be a win for everybody You'll get better content, but then also you won't be making yourself a bad reputation and you won't be pissing people off. Go work on your content. It's that easy. Go ahead and kick out that tweet that you have in drafts being like, oh my God, I can't believe this bitch is on front page. Delete it, boo. Channel that energy into looking at your content and saying, what can I change to improve? Mm. That is going to be your better play in the grand scheme of things. And again, That's not to say that there's not problems and issues to talk about, but you need to learn how to talk about them before you get out here on things like this bird app, your Facebook, your Instagram, and you ultimately make an ass of yourself. Then want to turn around six months later and go, why can't I grow my channel? Mm -hmm. It's all right there. Look at what you've been doing for the last six months. Look at how it has no contributions to your content. Notice how ashiness does not bring moisture. Use lotion for moisture. Work on your content. <laughs> oh my goodness. Um, and I'm just saying. Me, moisturize and, your content. <laughs> I'm all for it. <laughs> um, and for me, it's, I, I want people to really sit back and reflect on if you are a streamer and you're not growing, think about why. Think about what you're doing that is not either getting people to stay for your content or for you, or are you, think about, am I trend chasing? Am I collaborating with other streamers? Because we're all streamers. This happened because we talked to each other. Networking is not a dirty word. Um, And also be okay with taking a break and rebranding and re-evaluating why you're on this platform or any other platform. And also, if you and think about why you got into streaming at all. If you got into it to be rich, if you started day zero and said, I'm going to be a partner, okay, cool. How much of the grind are you willing to do? And can you swallow your pride and collaborate mm-hmm. with folks and be okay with not being the one that gets picked all the time? Because being in Pick Me Twitter or Pick Me Twitch is never a good look. And people mm-hmm. don't forget. Mm-hmm. And my final thought on that is never forget work on your content is a 24 7 365 thing there is never going to be a point where that phrase cease to have meaning you're Mm -hmm. looking at three people right now who are partnered streamers who i can assure you have revamped reevaluated redone re just scheduled everything at least two or three times i'm on the overlay i'm sitting on right now is my third iteration and dead ass, I'm thinking about redoing it here as soon as I get free time in 2030. Oh my god! I think I'm now- on iteration number 30 at this point. Plus, like if I think of all the layouts, it actually became a joke in my chat with how much I'm constantly experimenting to find mm-hmm. the perfect 
format for me. Mm-hmm. And I feel like I'm getting closer. Granted, right now, my broadcast is relatively consistent with most uh, just chatting uh, style mm-hmm. of broadcast. If I switch to my main screen, that's what I'm experimenting with right now is circular logo and the game screen. But I'm still t- working on constantly adjusting my layout, including how I feel. I've even introduced uh, noir mode for if I'm not feeling good. People know if I'm in all black and white, I am not in a happy mood. Don't no. mess with me today. I'm going to play the game as I play it. Oh. And so it's uh, it's always an iteration. It's always something we're changing. And if you're not iterating, you're not growing or changing with the space, then what are you doing? You're just you're going to be stagnant, right. be on a plateau the rest of your career. Mm-hmm. And like I would say, I've been wanting to change my end screen and my BRB screen for ages, but I've just been inundated with work. But it still is something that that's what happens. I work on my content. People were here when I had my circle cam and I haven't been circle cam for like maybe a year we're coming in on. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Yeah, because while you were talking, it's like I realized I've been on Twitch almost seven years. Streaming for almost six of those. Because Drag Mage Inquisition yeah. will be six in November. So I've lost mm-hmm. count of how many overlays and iterations and and I'm just not gonna look at XSplit right now because I'm on sixty-two overlays right now. Sixty-two there scenes. Um but yeah, I think I think that's it because now we're a little over time, at least far as uh Twisted's availability. Um but mm-hmm. this was great. A lot of people in my chat have asked when the next one is. So, and we're, I already we're, told y'all it's gonna be in 2024. Y'all think this is a game? <laughs> I think by that point all... we can do it in person. I think that'll be a capability <laughs> right? by that point. I, I think at that <laughs> it's point it's gonna be we, us at a coffee table. We'll just be in creator camp, I like mean, IRL. Love that. Oh my goodness! Oh if, yeah. If I'm y'all are up that. early, I want to bring back coffee with Cipher, but we could do it as a Twitch podcast instead. Oh shit! Okay. okay. I was like, I can get up early with the right motivations and stuff. I got tea, and then who knows? Maybe I might mess around and get espresso, like I said I wanted a while ago. Oh, I did an Americano today, and <laughs> oh boy, was I riding on that for a while. Oh dear. Uh, but yeah, I'm down. Let's 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 figure it out. Let's figure it out because I think these types of conversations need to be heard. There's a lot of myths in the space. There's a lot of yep. uh, replication in the space that needs to break. There's a lot of art imitating art that needs to stop in the space, and it's dangerous art half the time that I'm seeing. Mm -hmm. Um, And I I hope y'all take these, what we've talked about, take it home with you, digest it, think about how you can apply it to your shows, think about your foundations, your additives, distractions, and what you can do to better this space moving forward. Because that's why I'm in this space, is to try to make it a better place, and I want all of us to be working towards that same goal. Well said. All right, um, outros. Um for the benefit of people listening, not watching the squad stream, and then for real, we're gonna stop. We're not gonna do the Midwestern goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> John, who are you? Can and I start? really, John, you start. Okay, all good. Uh, once again, thanks everybody for being here. My name is John, also known as Kawaii Guy. You can find me uh, here on Twitch at backslash Kawaii Guy Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays at 6 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. Um, obviously you can find me across all the other sides of the internet, across a multitude of properties and all the things I've worked on. But if you want to take home some of the learnings and stuff that I've discussed today, I do writings over on kawaiiguy.com where you can learn uh, more about some of the theories that I've developed in the space uh, and take those home with you. Thanks again, everybody. Twisted. Yes, it's your my turn. It I was is. Say it's my turn. Um, I'm Vanessa and AKA Pleasantly Twisted. You can find me everywhere as Pleasantly Twisted. I talk about race and I talk about queer shit. Uh, Sometimes I write on medium and sometimes those get a little bit heavier. So if that's something that takes a little bit to get through, by all means, go for it. But understand that when I talk on medium, it is very serious. It's very real. Auntie Vanessa is out and it takes you a while to really sit back and digest it. And some of it will make you uncomfortable. Um, like I said earlier, I write guides. I'm getting back into guide making. I'm actually going to start working on a Final Fantasy VII Remake hard mode guide here in a little bit at the request of the community. I uh, do freelance work. I'm the lead artist for the Motherlands RPG, so if that's something you're looking forward to, look forward to some what I hope is deemed as swanky art coming through for the overlays and character busts. 
And then on top of all that, I'm part of the Twitch Creator Growth Program. I stream, regardless of all of those things, on Wednesdays and Fridays at 6.30 p.m. Eastern Time. And then on Saturdays at noon Eastern Time, I usually go for about five hours. Saturdays I go for six on occasion if we're feeling good and having a good time. So, uh, yeah, that's what I do. I talk about stuff, and I play games decently, apparently. And I paint. You do better than decently. Uh, oh, my. <laughs> look, I have your phone number. I will. You will get a text. Don't text me. <laughs> Don't text me my legal name. Why you do this? <laughs> Auntie Tiny is about to jump out, and I don't say that lightly. Oh, no. Don't try to crawl under the desk either. I can still see you. Uh, I'm Tanya Cypher mm -hmm. Tier. I do a lot of variety stuff. Today's variety was us having this podcast. Uh, tomorrow's variety, if since I don't have any meetings, is climbing the summit in the Division Two because that's finally out today. But I didn't have time to play it, and my internet went out. Um, I'm the same username everywhere. Say hi, be nice, or you might find yourself blocked already. In that case, you may be an asshole. And uh, October 4th, be here at this channel, 4 p.m. I'm sorry, 4 p.m. Pacific. <laughs> what? It's true. I love I love what you just said. Like, that. that's so odd. Be honest. nice or catch bands. That's the <laughs> next sticker, actually. I mean, if Blickamore isn't, <laughs> des on. If Blickamore isn't designing it as we speak. Um, right. So, yeah, be here, oh, my God, in two weeks for Into the Motherlands, a new futuristic sci-fi RPG, Afrofuturistic that's redundant uh, for me great team of folks uh, Vanessa's doing character art and the overlays which look amazing uh, follow that on Twitter which is and thank you Dosbiff I need to get enough subs to pay Dosbiff because I, I feel like Dosbiff is in my brain hey bronze I was like talking about uh, bronze girl summoned you <laughs> we're talking about into the motherland summon you uh, that bronze girl is part of the team too and we're gonna be streaming the adventure she's writing so uh yeah we we're here i'm actually gonna hang out for a little bit um if you want to hang out john i know you need to go vanessa yes yeah, i am I'm going ready. to be unfortunately running away because i with all the requests that i got during taekwondo i think i'm gonna be getting up early tomorrow and uh tomorrow's gonna be art day nice oh, there lots we go. of art i like lots, it lots lots of art I'm going to eat dinner and check in on my pups because we just brought them home from the vet. Well, my wife oh. did well, during this show. Puppies. Um, they're, all, they're all well.